I love playing games and I love listening to podcasts. So melding the two pastimes together is just a match made in heaven. And this whole video on what a podcast game is and five recommendations was prompted by me playing Vampire Survivors on the Nintendo Switch. So the concept of a podcast game is pretty simple. It's a game that you can listen to a podcast while playing and not feel like you're losing anything. If you're playing a narrative RPG, then listen to a podcast probably detracts from the experience. But if you're playing a game like a roguelike or an action RPG, then listen to a podcast won't take anything away from the experience and in most cases will actually enhance it. So I came up with some arbitrary factors that I think make a great podcast game. So let's talk about it. And stick around at the end because I'm going to give you five perfect podcast games that released this year. The number one factor is the importance of the story. As I said, I know I'd miss out on loads if I played Baldur's Gate 3 while listening to a podcast. I would miss party chatter and other important story moments. And I would honestly ruin the experience. So the story has to either be in the background or so uninteresting that I don't care. Or in the case of some RPGs like let's say Fallout where you can go 30 to 40 minutes without having to interact with story or characters. So you can just selectively pause and play the podcast and then explore the world and listen to the podcast. One of my favorites from the past while is Elden Ring. The world feels rich and lived in, but the narrative doesn't really exist. So I never felt like I missed something. And there are certain action RPGs like Torchlight or Diablo 4, where I just simply don't care about the story. I'm just there for a fun time. So that's a perfect podcast. The second factor is a simple gameplay loop. Ideally it'd be something that you can pick up and play and it won't take up too much of your brain. It can be as dumb as a Muso or a Vampire Survivors or even on the harder end, the Souls like games are great because yes, they are difficult, but they do have a pretty simple control scheme to understand. The thing about these games in my eyes is that they don't always have to be amazing experiences. Like yes, a game like Elden Ring, Tears of the Kingdom, they're brilliant games, they're brilliant podcast games, but I will always say that even mediocre open world games like Atlas Fallen or Forspoken have space in the market for turn your brain off, do some random open world objectives and have some fun kind of game. There are days when we're all tired, jobs, work, relationships, stress, all of this gets in the way, and maybe we don't have the energy for a deep experience where we either need to get invested in a narrative or sit down and try our hardest at a super tough game. Sometimes switching your brain off to a simple and satisfying gameplay loop is all we need. And that's another factor that I think is crucial for podcast games. The third factor in this arbitrary list is that these games need content. Now I'm not one to sit here and say, oh, games need to be hundred hours long because they don't. They just need to have enough content to keep you coming back for a while, that could be 10 to 20 hours, and some games will give you even more. I mean, I platinum days gone, that gave me 80 hours of playtime. There's a reason why I have hundreds of hours in the Borderlands series. Yes, I'm a weirdo that actually enjoys the story and characters in Borderlands, but once I've seen it through once, I pop in a podcast, build my character, farm weapons, and just have fun. And there are so many games like this. Immortals Phoenix Rising, Starlink Battle for Atlas, Days Gone. These games have so much content, and yet they are run of the mill, open world objectives. But at the end of the day, sometimes that's all we want. So content is key for these types of games. I understand I'm talking a lot about open world games, but another great genre are roguelikes because the majority of them fit every single arbitrary criteria that I just gave. Now, ideally all of these games I recommend here will have all of these factors, but having one or two of these factors still passes the podcast game check for me. So here are five great games that released in 2023 that are just perfect to play with a podcast. Well, four great and one that's mediocre. Now you will notice a running theme in these five games. Every single one of them is an action RPG to some extent. Starting with my favorite game on the list, it's Remnant 2. Now my first experience with this game was quite confusing. I was getting bugs that I didn't realize were bugs. And honestly, I was kind of lost at what I was doing. Objectives weren't showing up and at one point I got a game breaking bug. So that was bad. It looks like a lot of these bugs have been fixed, but I eventually re-rolled my character, started fresh, and I beat the game, I put 15 hours into it. And this game, the whole time I was listening to podcasts because the story isn't good. The story is completely uninteresting. I Even Remnant from the Ashes, I had absolutely zero interest in the story. And that's the same with pretty much every action RPG, except for Borderlands. But what you get here in Remnant 2 is just an absolutely fantastic gameplay loop. So let me break it down. So after the rather confusing start, you get to choose a character class. And there's a lot to choose from from the start. I chose the guy, the handler, that had a dog because they're always my favorite. I like playing hunters that have animal companions. And all of them play quite different. They all have their own abilities. They all have their own perks, which is really cool. And you just go through these action RPG, randomly generated dungeons. But where this game shines is the procedural generation, which is something that I can't really say for most games. Most games, when procedural generation comes into it, 
they kind of become a bit samey or boring but here is how they bring in so much content into the game so remnant 2 is an action rpg with some souls like elements and where all the fun comes from is exploring these dungeons so basically there are predetermined levels that you have to go to to complete the story but you go to them in different orders on every single playthrough and when you're in these levels regardless of what you do there is an overarching objective that follows through all of the levels so you go to this medieval world and one room looks the same but then there's these dungeons that you can go into and there that's when the randomly generated stuff comes in and every single dungeon you go into is different you might have different enemies you might have different item drops you might have different weapons and at the end which is the best part you get random bosses different bosses so you play one playthrough and you get 12 bosses and then on the next playthrough you get 12 more bosses that's just a random number i'm throwing out and there could only be a crossover of two or three bosses that you fought on each playthrough and then you get new weapons from the bosses because bosses drop essentially boss souls that you can use to craft mods and weapons which is just one of my favorite things in remnant from the ashes and remnant 2 and yeah i just had a lot of fun with this game the final boss is really tough and he's really cool i really had to force myself to, to get good as the kids would say and all the other bosses range from kind of hard to easy this game isn't a souls like game it has souls like elements but I wouldn't go into this expecting a super, super difficult experience. It's definitely harder than other action RPGs like Diablo 4, but it's nowhere near as hard as a Souls-like game. So I wouldn't be turned off uh, by that if you're looking for an action RPG, because the Souls-like elements don't get in the way. They actually kind of enhance the game, really. This game is a must-play. It's one of my favorite games of the year. Just keep an eye out on bugs, because the problem is, it seems some of the bugs have been fixed, but... There's a lot of people reporting a load of different bugs so this is probably a even though i do recommend the game itself if you can get it with no bugs which is obviously a complete look at the draw but if you can just wait and let it get a couple of patches this game will be a like just a must play and it'll be a lot cheaper it's a very good game next and what a shocker we have another action rpg it's dead island 2 this game had no right being as good as it was because this game was announced something like 10 years ago and it handed between two or three different developers and somehow it comes out and it's actually good in a world where dying light one and two now exist which are probably some of my favorite open world games ever like obviously techland made dead island one and when dying light two or when dying light one and two came out you realized oh dead island actually sucked because it did the first dead island isn't a good game and i don't know how anybody played it back in the day but that's for another story but then Dying Light 1 and 2 come out and them games are absolutely fantastic. They're just really fun, great parkour, pretty good melee combat as well and just loads of content. Another perfect podcast game. But then Dead Island 2 comes out and it's super colourful. It has actual personality unlike Dead Island 1. It has a very visceral combat system, probably one of the better or the best melee combat systems I've ever played in a game. Each swing feels impactful. There's blood guts everything flying off everywhere the, the funny thing about dead island 2 is that it demonetizes or not demonetize it limits the monetization on every single video because of how gory it is which goes to show how good the gore is it's brilliant but the thing that can be coming back to this game is that one it's not bloated it took me maybe 20 hours to beat which i really enjoy it was a nice amount of content and i didn't platinum it so platinuming it would give me you know a good bit more content but the story itself, as I said earlier with, with the podcast games, isn't very interesting. The characters are super cheesy, which I don't really think is a bad thing, but it's certainly not a good thing. I mean, Dying Light 1 and Dying Light 2, Dying Light 2's story was a bit more serious, and yeah, it was fun, and it had some choice, and I did enjoy it, but Dead Island 2's is like really cheesy, so I didn't have to pay attention to it whatsoever. There's just loads of content. It's really fun because you're exploring just the whole of la like you're up in the mountains near like the hollywood sign then you're down on like a boardwalk in like santa monica and you're you know the enemies are like buff guys buff guys that were training at muscle beach and people on rollerblades and yeah it's it just has a personality that is just really fun I, I just can't put it in words how much fun i had with this game that's that's all it is it's nothing more than fun the crafting system is probably my favorite part of it because you can make some really cool weapons like I'm trying to remember. Firstly, you had like samurai swords, but then you can electrocute your samurai swords. And even the guns in this game felt good because the guns in Dead Island were awful. Dead Island 2 is just a great podcast game. 
just really fun i recommend it to anybody even at full price this game is definitely worth it for full price because there's the right amount of content it never outsays its welcome and the content that is there even though i don't really like the writing or the story it's just fun and of course this game is co-op every game in co-op is more fun but that would defeat the whole purpose of a podcast game next we have another game that i'm currently playing and it's everspace 2 so i remember hearing about everspace 1 and everspace 1 was a roguelike ship combat game arcade ship combat it always piqued my interest but i never got it and then everspace 2 came to pc and i didn't review it back then but i kind of regret it because now it's on console i'm playing it on ps5 and this game once again perfect podcast game but what this does really well is the zen like experience there's something so tranquil about this game basically the story is useless so <laughs> perfect podcast game <laughs> but where this game shines is that it's an action rpg at heart where you're building a ship and you can have two different types of weapons equipped on your ship you can have two different types of missiles you can equip different shields different hulls and then you can also get different ship types that change how you play so one ship is like like a tank ship one is like a really fast ship one it works with like really high energy so that they can shoot weapons like like just unlimitedly others don't have as much energy so they can shoot weapons in short bursts but they can move around more so there's loads of customization in there and everything in this game is basically side quests main quests exploring these random encounters that you get as you're flying around space and everything kind of works towards building your ship or upgrading your ship every encounter you find you'll kill enemies that drop debris they drop loot and then you'll also find these wrecked ships that you have to explore to have these kind of environmental puzzles now these environmental puzzles have gotten quite samey i guess it's it's pretty simple the majority of them are find a energy battery charging thing pick up the battery and put it in another place to open it up but then you get more loot and then as you're going around you find resource nodes that you can break which gives you more stuff and then all this just goes into building this ship and everything goes into obviously upgrading like your armor your weapons but then also each companion that you find which uh, i don't really like the companions i don't like the writing in the game it's it's there's nothing in the game that has enticed me i've played it for about eight ten hours apparently there's like over 50 hours worth of content in this game which again is great for a podcast game but every character just is a bit flat i don't really remember them i don't really care about the writing to be honest and i don't think you're going into this game caring about the writing you're going in because you want to build a ship and as i was saying with the companions each companion has their own skill tree and every single resource that you find is either going to be used to craft something that you can use to upgrade your companion or craft something that you can use to upgrade your weapons and it's just this really nice loop it kind of reminds me something similar of starling battle for atlas with more ship combat basically this is it, it's an action rpg it's an arcadey flight sim well not a flight sim but it's arcadey and i really like how the ships handle because my big issue is that i don't like realistic ship flight in games i think it's very cumbersome but here they feel snappy it almost feels more like a third person shooter than anything else which is exactly what i wanted i don't want anything that's going to be too cumbersome or too intricate because i think it would honestly kind of ruin the game to be honest it's similar to starling battle for atlas because that game also felt like a third person shooter again i'm just having a great time listening to the podcast and playing this game it's nothing so far it's nothing too deep the story isn't deep i don't care about the story the combat can be kind of difficult but it's not too difficult and it's just really there's a very calming it's a very calming game which is weird to say where you're fighting outlaws flying around space because when you get to these areas when you wipe out all the enemies there's just like a synth soundtrack playing in the background or sometimes no soundtrack whatsoever and you're just completely into like the emptiness of space exploring a you know a shipwreck collecting resources and there's just something very calming about that it's a very nice experience i'm having a lot of fun with it another great podcast game and next we have atlas fallen which is the one that is kind of mediocre and i wanted to get one mediocre podcast game in here because the story in atlas fallen isn't bad it's just not good or interesting there's it's completely inoffensive and i didn't care about it and the reason why i didn't care about it is because the voice acting is really bad it just feels very phoned in and just bland 
none of the characters were interesting they all just felt like generic like fantasy characters so i didn't care about the story which is one of the reasons why this is a podcast game but other than that this is a checklist open world game and where this game shines is the combat it's honestly surprisingly good because you have this momentum bar as you dish out damage this momentum bar increases and the more your momentum increases the more damage you deal and the more combos you have unlocked and also the more perks you unlock which just make you overall stronger and this momentum system kind of forces you to kind of get good as, the, as they say because if you have low momentum then you don't deal much damage whatsoever so you kind of have to balance between having high momentum or medium momentum so that you can dish out good damage and then also using your l2 r2 shatter ability which depletes your momentum bar so it's kind of a trade-off it's a dance and the combat system is what carries this game traversal is fun you do this sand skating which feels great you also have like a double jump and a couple of dashes and eventually the levels get really vertical which makes them very fun to explore but up until then the world isn't exactly designed around moving around well i said in my review that i would have loved if there was kind of a pathless system if anybody played the pathless where there's kind of things that you can do as you're sliding around to boost your speed later on you unlock this perk that basically gives you a, a speed boost every resource you collect on the ground but the world isn't built around it so i i actually found that one quite useless it's a decent decent podcast game complete definition of turn your brain off and have some fun full price i probably wouldn't pay uh i would wait for a sale definitely but if you can get this for 20 30 dollars good podcast game just like first spoken exactly loads of parallels to be drawn from first spoken pretty much everything i said about atlas fall can be brought into first spoken it's a good podcast game and then finally the whole reason why i made this video is vampire survivors i played this game recently on my switch I had it on PC and I played a small bit on my Steam Deck. I played a good bit, but eventually I gave up. But now I'm back into it on, on the Switch. And there's not much to say about this game other than this is the essence of an action RPG, like the end game of an action RPG or the end game of a roguelike. Kind of just boiled down into like a stock cube, you know? You know the way they make these stock cubes where they get all these delicious flavors and they put them in a big machine in some factory and then boil it down into this little pot of flavor that's what vampire survivors is it's stupid fun that doesn't take up too much of your time it's only three euro doesn't take up much of your money has loads of content great to listen to a podcast with but also it's great because i enjoy action rpgs when they kind of force you into the grind and you're there leveling up and you're there min maxing your gear and you're farming this weapon and you're fighting this boss and that is cool and I love doing that. But there are times when I just want to sit down and just get the little dopamine receptors going in my head. And Vampire Survivors is exactly that. Basically, if you've ever played Torchlight, Borderlands, Diablo, blah, 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 the list goes on, action RPGs. And you get to the end game where you have 20 different abilities going. You have a big boss coming at you, a load of elite enemies. You're using all these status effects and everything's popping off. Damage numbers are going everywhere. You're getting all this loot. That's what Vampire Survivors is. But instead of having to put 25, 30, 40, 50 hours into it, every 30 minutes you get that loop. I don't agree with people saying this is like the best game ever. It's a very good game. It's very fun. There are better auto battler kind of roguelike action RPGs out there. Soul Sound Survivors is one which I have reviewed. But it's still very good. And on the Switch, it runs surprisingly well. There are times when it hitches, but that's just because there's so much going on. It still holds a pretty decent frame rate, like never completely froze. Hasn't crashed yet even though I've tested the game to its limits. And yeah, that's another podcast game. There's five podcast games. I talked a lot about podcast games. If I say the word podcast game one more time, I will probably die. So I really appreciate you watching. I would love to know what your favorite podcast games are down below. This list could have been 300 games because I listen to tens of hours of podcasts every single week and I play tens or if not hundreds of hours of games every week because I have a problem. But don't tell anybody that. I really appreciate you watching. Join Discord down below. Join the Twitter. All this crap. Goodbye. Subscribe.